All right, everybody, this is one of our many cardiopalm things that we're all confused about, but I gotcha. So we're gonna go over a pleural effusion, not to be confused with pulmonary edema or pulmonary embolism. This is its own thing, but we will talk about it. So anatomy. So essentially what's going on is there's a pocket of fluid forming between the linings of the pleura. So we have our lungs here and these are the pleural linings. So remember the pleura are a serous membrane, which means that they're both super, super good at sliding. And it's a two layer thick membrane. So we have our parietal layer, which is on the outside of the lungs. So this is this little like red loop is the parietal one. And then we have our um, visceral pleura, which is the lining of the actual lung here. So it's got a little space in here where there's fluid that allows it to you know move around easily. Um, if there's no fluid, then we would have a pleural friction rub, which is not good at all. Um, that could cause irritation of the lungs and whatnot. So what's happening is there is this uh, pleural lining with the serous membranes and with the, you know, pleural space in between each membrane. And so what's happening is if this membrane starts to take in a lot of water in this pleural space, it can start to expand the pleural space, which then pushes the visceral pleura. So the visceral pleura is the one on the inside. So think like you have your visceral muscles and then your parietal, think your parietal lobe is all the way on the outside. So parietal means more closer to the outside. Visceral means more deep inside. So our visceral lining starts to push up into the lungs. So that's kind of what's happening here is that you've got all of this fluid accumulating, could be like pus, fluid, blood, something like that. And so what it's doing is expanding, pushing on that uh, visceral pleural lining to squish the lungs in. So this is not good at all. So that's kind of what's happening on the anatomy side of things. And then the etiology of its, itself is that, well, this is just another picture, is that it's a buildup of fluid around the pleural space in the lungs. So yes, this area between our visceral uh, pleura, which is the one that connects directly to the lungs, and then a parietal pleura, which kind of is connects to the outside of this pleural cavity that is going to start expanding with fluid. So there's a big fluid buildup in there. What are some things that can cause this? So congestive heart failure is specifically left-sided because left side is going to cause that pulmonary edema, all that fluid back up into the lungs. So think left side of the heart lungs is where the fluid builds up. So that's what's going on with that. Pulmonary embolisms, again, blood to the area gets blocked, starts to leak out into the cavity. It's just bad. This can be another thing that has that happens with it. Any sort of infection in the lungs. So again, as I talked about this fluid, it's blue, just say it's fluid, could be pus or blood or anything like that. Uh, pulmonary embolism would cause blood in that space. Remember, that's why we would have our hemoptysis, the coughing of blood, all of that gross stuff. Um, that would be, let's say this is blood. Pneumonia would be a type of infection that would cause all of this to be gross yellow gunk and everything filling up in there, still causing the same effect of the pleural lines expand, push up on it, and then that's going to cause, um, you know, the, the decreased lung capacity and increase in fluid surrounding the lungs in the pleural cavity. And then cancer, any sort of, you know, the lungs are a common place for metastases to go to. And so we're going to see that that could also cause pulmonary effusion or pleural effusion, um, pulmonary edema and stuff like that. So that's kind of what's going on. So understand that pulmonary edema is a buildup of fluid inside of the lungs and whatnot. And then pleural effusion is between the pleural linings. Basically, you can have both at the same time. Just kind of know what's so like talking about where's the fluid going? Where is it hanging out at? Pleural effusion the, between the pleural linings, pulmonary edema everywhere in the lungs, soaking up in the lungs. So that's kind of what's going on with that. And this is what it's going to look like on a chest X-ray. So do we have to know how to be radiologists? No. Do we have to know when we look at a chest X-ray and we're like, oh, that doesn't look good at all? Yes. So this is a chest X-ray of an individual who's got a uh, pleural effusion on the left side of their lungs. And so you're going to see essentially the lung should expand all the way down into this section here. But all this white stuff is going to be fluid buildup. Uh, this person probably got like congestive heart failure too. The, the heart doesn't look too good. But don't worry about that. 
Um, so we'll see that this whole area is actually filling up with fluid. So it's essentially like what this picture is showing. This is the white spot that's on the x-ray. That means that there's a lot of fluid and you can see the actual space for the lungs to be able to expand is super, super, super small. So not good at all for this individual. Uh, some uh, descriptions of what this will be described as on the boards. So it can be chest pain when deep breathing deeply. This is called pleurisy. So if you see the word pleurisy, that means that this individual, whenever they take a deep breath, it's going to hurt. And so they're gonna be like, Ugh, uh, and it like feels like it's deep inside. I know sometimes like maybe you've worked out like really, really hard and you try to breathe and you feel like your muscles on the outside of like your chest like hurts and stuff like in the muscles and the intercostals, that's a little different. So it went a little too hard with the workout, um, but this is like a deep internal pain when you try to breathe deeply. That's why like when anybody's having chest pain, ask them, does it hurt to breathe deeply? Because we're doing like, you know, going through differential diagnostics and everything. Shortness of breath, kind of obvious. The lungs aren't really working well because they're getting crammed with unnecessary fluid. They're gonna, it's going to be difficult to breathe. So we'll have both the dyspnea, the difficulty breathing and shortness of breath. So they're going to be gasping for air. A fever, because remember, this could be caused by an infection such as pneumonia. So that's a common reason uh, why somebody would end up with pleural effusion. So we would see that. Cough, yes, the body's trying to clear out unnecessary secretions in the lungs. It could be flu blood, pus, all that stuff, not good. Makes sense why we're hearing the crackle sound or the popping upon oscillation of the lungs that always indicates fluid. What type of fluid? We're not sure yet, but if we're hearing a bunch of crackles and whatnot going on in the lungs, we're like not good. Again, our job is to know when it's not good. We got to do something. And then to keep me out of the breathing respiration rate will increase because they're gasping for air because the lungs aren't working. So how are we treating this? So what's going to happen is an individual who is allowed to, definitely not us, is going to go in and perform a pleurosynthesis. So same thing, like synthesis means they're going to pull out fluid. They get like an amniocentesis with a uh, pregnant person. They'll pull out the amniotic fluid with this big ass needle, like a big ass needle. Um, and they're going to assess that, you know, genetic testing, whatever, if we're talking about amniocentesis, but for a pleural synthesis, they're going to pull the fluid out. And usually like visually they can kind of tell if it's looking like pus and gross and gunky, they got an infection. If it's looking bloody, well, then we got something else going on related to circulation and whatnot. Um, they might need a chest tube, something like that. And so they'll do a pleurosynthesis. That's a removal of fluid from the pleural cavity. And so then they're going to assess that fluid and see what the heck's going on with this patient, why they have fluid. Um, they'll be using medication to treat the cause of it. So if it was a pulmonary embolism, they're giving them heparin and whatnot, um, congestive heart failure, give them a water pill or something like that. Um, just really try to like decrease the risk of um, any sort of complications following having a pleurosynthesis, just use medication to prevent it from happening again. And so when we get them on the flip side, when it comes to, you know, rehabilitation and whatnot, getting them back to their daily functions. Same thing as cardiac rehab, you know, take their pulse ox, make sure everything's okay, positional changes with medication and whatnot. Um, just looking for signs and symptoms of the fluid returning to the, to the lungs, that like shortness of breath, basically everything on this slide, they start having this again, uh-oh, not good. Um, and so with us, we're just working on, you know, functional ambulation, mobility, transfer, strengthening, breathing better, lots of breathing, respiration, uh, chest PT is going to be hanging out with us for this patient. We'll have some respiratory therapists helping us out. Basically what we're doing is just getting them back to as independent as functional without overexerting this patient or causing any additional complications and just being aware of when, oh crap, let's go get somebody. This is, doesn't look good at all. So that's basically our role when we see this with the patient. So keywords, fluid within the plural space. That is literally the definition of, uh, Pleural effusion, pleurisy, as I said before, that is the chest pain when breathing deeply. So just recognize that word it could be associated with something that's pulmonary related, such as pleural effusion. Pleurosynthesis is the how we fix this, get the fluid out of it. So if they're performing a pleurosynthesis on a patient, the patient has pleural effusion. It's kind of like, why else would you do that? There is literally only reason why we would be doing a pleural synthesis on somebody. And I say we, you know, I don't mean we at this point not me. They don't trust me with needles. I thought needles, fun fact, I thought needles were the most common fear in America. The most common fear in America is actually public speaking. Fun fact. And then shortness of breath is another thing that we would just look for because then we're saying, you know, tachypnea, uh, dyspnea, stuff like that, not looking good with the breathing, pulmonary related, something's going on. 
crackles in the lungs upon oscillation is the, like we see crackles, we think fluid. Crackles are fluid. That's about it. That is our word association for that. All right, guys, so we have a patient for our sample question. A patient arrives in the clinic for cardiac rehab, secondary to congestive heart failure. The patient recently underwent a pleurocentesis yesterday. If the procedure was successful, what lung, sung, what lung sounds would we expect to hear upon oscillation? One, crackles. Two, ronchi. Three, stridor or four normal breath sounds. So I'll give you guys a second to think about this and reread the question. All right, guys, so the answer is normal breath sounds. So the person had a pleurocentesis, which why would we have that? They had pleural fusion. But we said if the procedure was successful, that means that we did the thing. We got all the fluid out of the lungs. What would we expect to hear in the lungs upon oscillation? If the procedure was successful, there shouldn't be any more fluid. So we would not hear the crackles which is what we would assume that we would hear if we um, there still was fluid. Bronchi is the snoring, strider is the high-pitched screech, streak, shrieking kind of sound, um, the high-pitched wheeze kind of thing for stridor. Uh, if the procedure was successful with the pleurocentesis of removing all of the fluid, we should hear normal breath sounds following um, completion of this procedure. So just kind of be aware, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just saying we did this, it worked. Things should be, you know, homeostasis should be returned to normal kind of thing. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful in explaining pleural effusion, where we would see it, differences between that pulmonary edema. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I got you guys.